Hello everyone, welcome back to my doll collecting channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the complex subject surrounding Maple Leaf Girl and clearing up the misconceptions and misunderstandings around the brand. According to my YouTube analytics, a large majority of my viewers are from the United States. Whenever I post about Maple Leaf Girls, I receive so many questions and some have even stated they have bought a Maple Leaf doll after watching my videos. For those of you who are not yet convinced that you should keep an eye out for these dolls, I have made this video just for you. First, let's talk about the history of Maple Lee brand and what it is. Maple Lee is a brand of dolls that focus on Canadian geography, history, and culture. They are 18 inches tall and are made of vinyl and come with a 64 page journal and additional journal pages which contain information about Canada can be purchased with outfits and accessories. Originally there were four dolls, Taryn, the doll I had from Alberta who loved camping in the outdoors, Brienne from Manitoba who loved living on a farm and ballet, Alexi from Toronto who loved fashion and gymnastics, and Jenna from Nova Scotia who loved soccer and dressing up as Anna Green Gables. According to their website, one summer, Taryn, Brienne, Alexi, and Jenna happened to meet during an incredible adventure they'll never forget. Before returning to their hometowns across Canada, they pledged to remain friends forever. They even chose a name for themselves, the Maple Lee Girls. These four girls were released in 2003, after a decade of research, according to their website. Meaning the idea of Maple Lee Girls began in 1993. Since then, Leonie from Quebec City, who loves hockey and music, was released in 2008. Sila, an Inuit girl from Nunavut, was released in 2011 and received several awards. One aspect of this doll which I loved as a kid was that several of her outfits and accessories were made in traditional indigenous ways by people living in Nunavut or Canada, Canada themselves. This is one reason why Maple Leaf Girls is praised for being culturally aware and seen as truly diverse by a majority of collectors, but I will talk about more about that later. In 2005, Charles C was released, a girl with a spunky style from British Columbia. Around this time, Maple Leaf released the Maple Leaf Friends line, a line where children can choose a doll that looks like them or allows them to create their own story. And yes, boy dolls are included in this line as well. It was founded by Catherine Gallagher Morton, who created the company Avonlea Traditions in 1988 in Newmarket, Ontario, which is near Toronto for those of you who are unfamiliar with the area. And quote, Quickly secured a position as the world's largest distributor of Anne and has developed several new themed based collections, including a large range of award winning porcelain and play dolls, stationery, antique replica doll furniture, and other fine collectibles and giftware. The article goes on to state that Maple Lee is now the sole focus of the company, which demonstrates the success of the brand. Catherine Gallagher Morton is still very active in the Maple Lee doll Facebook groups, and I have had many pleasant interactions with her online, which makes the company have a small Small business feel, despite growing international success in the doll collecting community. Maple Lee now offers the same flat shipping rate of $9 to both Canadian and American customers. And to answer the question I have received a lot on my Instagram, I have no idea how much of these dolls cost to ship to the UK. According to their website, we take great pride in being a Canadian based company. The development, design, sculpting, writing, illustration, translation, marketing, distribution, and customer service of Maple Lee products are all done in Canada. We specifically made arrangements with several Canadian suppliers to manufacture specific pieces for our collection. For example, craftspeople in Nunavut make Silas Pang hat and amazing amuti for us according to their traditional designs. A Toronto-based factory makes our girl-sized hoodies, and a family business in Ontario makes our doll-sized toboggans Muskoka chairs by doing everything from growing the trees right through crafting the finished product. However, there is no vinyl doll factories in Canada, thus the assembly of our Canadian design products is mainly done at a highly qualified, socially responsible factories in China. Morton decided to make these dolls because, quote, as a mother of young children, Catherine th always thought carefully about the playthings she brought into her home. She was disappointed with the increasing number of diva-style dolls on the market that emphasized body image, dating, and glamour. Quote, childhood is short enough. Children should not wish away longing for the day they are older, which is a common criticism that a lot of parents have with dolls for decades, and that was one of the reasons I asked for a Maple Leaf doll in the first place. Now that we have discussed the history, let's talk about the story surrounding Maple Leaf. As you may know, I'm a believer of the law of attraction and manifestation, and I believe Maple Leaf was the answer to one of my biggest toy dreams as a kid. When I was a child, the only dolls I had were Cabbage Patch Kids, Barbies, and Disney Toddler dolls, all which no look nothing like real girls. 
I used to love the look of porcelain dolls that my great-grandmother had given me with the realistic eyes and blonde curls and pink fluffy Victorian dress. You have no idea how hard it was for me to see such a beautiful doll and being told, don't touch. I think I must have had tried to be sneaky and played with her because eventually she ended up in my attic until I was old enough to have her. I always wanted a doll that looked like a porcelain doll, but I could actually play with. But whenever I went to Walmart or Toys R Us, there was nothing. In 2007, a few days after Christmas, I received a Maple Leaf Girl catalog in the mail. This was almost five years after the company was founded, and I remember on the cover there was a picture of two dolls. Now I know them as Alexi and Brienne, and I nearly passed out when I saw the cover. Can I see? I exclaimed as I saw the catalog. Sure, they agreed but maybe they shouldn't have because it's now become an addiction. I opened the catalog and my eyes were blown away by these dolls that look like porcelain dolls, but you could play and dress them. I'm assuming the reason these dolls have this look is because the company's ties to Avonlea traditions, which made porcelain dolls, which is probably why, in my opinion, they look so freaking gorgeous. After seeing the catalog, I begged my parents for Taryn, the doll at the time who looked the closest to me with brown hair and brown eyes. Well, I had brown hair and blue eyes. At this time, there was only the original four of Taryn, Alexi, Jenna, and Brienne. It was too late to ask for her for Christmas, but my birthday was in early March, and let me tell you, that was the longest January and February I've ever had in my life. My parents didn't have a lot of money at this time, and I knew that, but I knew I had literally dreamed of this doll for years. Side note, apparently my piano teacher gave me the catalog in 2006 and I asked for one, but my mom said it would be the only gift I would receive that Christmas, and apparently as a six-year-old that was a no-go, so I dropped the idea. I literally have no memory of this, but I remember thinking that when hearing this as a seven, almost eight-year-old, of how stupid I was at six, because I could have had a beautiful sparkly Terran in my arms, but no, I had to be greedy. I remember at seven years old learning the value of quality and not quantity because I could seriously not remember what was so important that I received for Christmas in 2006. March 2008 rolls around and I remember seeing a suspiciously large package sitting in the back of my present pile and thinking to myself, is that it? Is that her? And slightly rushing through my gifts to get to the present, but it was killing me not knowing if it was her or not. But then again, what else could it be? Then I got the box and boom baby, there she was. Look at her. Her hair is in such great condition and I seriously have no idea where those hair clips ended up. For two years, she was my only 18 inch doll and every year I got outfits and accessories for her, which I sold as a preteen, which is the stupidest decision I have ever made in my life. Seriously, that is probably the top three mistakes I have ever made in my life and I've literally cried over the fact that I'll never get those outfits back. I remember having instant regret my mom saying that someone was coming to pick them up. I, anyways, I'm going to start crying, so I'm going to move on. Let's talk about the two criticisms I see about Maple Leaf Girl, and let's debunk them right now. And yes, I will die on these hills. Criticism number one. Maple Leaf Girl is just a copy of American Girl. False. Canadians are constantly trying to break the untrue stereotype that we are the exact same as Americans. I've heard the phrase such as, you're America's hat or Canada doesn't have a unique culture, or people will argue with me that Canada is a, just a giant US state on multiple occasions. I'm going to rapid fire a list of reasons why Canada is not like the US, but of course this won't include everything. We did not have a revolution. We just politely asked to leave and Queen Victoria was like, okay. We still have the queen on our money and soon it will be a king, but I haven't seen those bills yet. Our government is different. America is an almost free market capitalist government. Canada is a mixed economy. We are not socialist. For the love of all things maple syrup, if I see one more time, I'm gonna scream. Even Canadians say this, but if you paid enough attention in high school, you would know that Canada is a mixed economy and we are not socialist. This is why Canada has some privately run businesses like stores and publicly run institutions such as schools and hospitals. Canadians also have a great appreciation of nature and several of our symbols on our coins, provincial flags, etc. are related to nature. Beavers, loons, caribou, Canadian geese, bears, orcas, etc. all have strong symbolisms and have a unique impact on our country's history. Canada did not have slavery as long as America did 
and since we stopped slavery when the Britons stopped slavery in 1833, which is 30 years before the American Civil War ended. Also, Canada was one of the first countries to allow gay marriage in the early 2000s. That being said, Canada has a horribly dark past when it comes to indigenous issues, and many Canadians are still mourning these discoveries, but this nationwide mourning that Canada is experiencing does make us different from the United States. Due to the death of the Queen and the residential school's discoveries, Canadians are taking a serious look at what it means to be Canadian and what this means for our country moving forward, and I don't think most people in the US and across the globe understand what Canada is going through, because they are not experiencing it themselves. Therefore, it can be insulting to say Canadians are just like Americans because we are experiencing a lot of things Americans and people across the world are not going through. What makes Maple Leaf Girls unique is they did not start with historicals. In fact, there is no historical characters like how American Girl got its start. There is also no Girl of the Year line, Biddy Baby, or Biddy Twin. There are other comparisons as of a few weeks ago. Maple Leaf is the Canadian distributor for the Ruby Reds Fashion Friends, a doll based lined in Nashville, Tennessee, which several collectors are now using as little sisters for the Maple Leaf Girls but I have no reason to believe Maple Leaf created the dolls themselves. I guess this could be a comparison to American Girl Welly Wishers, but I don't think so since they're two separate companies and not a new line within either brand. There is also the Maple Leaf Friends line, which is where you can pick a doll that looks like you or a doll that you just think is neat and create a name and story for them. This is similar to American Girl, but American Girl is far from the only line where they encourage kids to create a story and name for a doll. There's, there were My Twin Dolls and Barbie Fashionistas, which have a similar concept, so I'm highly doubt that Maple Leaf is stealing the idea. It has been so many times by many companies that it's hard to decide who was the first and the original. American Girl has very little Americana in its branding. Even though these dolls have locations where the story is set, a very little focus is on these specific locations, with the exceptions of dolls that travel to different places like Grace in France and Kira in Australia. But those cases, these stories aren't even set in the US. Maple Leaf, on the other hand, is the opposite. Each doll comes with their own province and what activities they do, what they enjoy, and places they travel within the province are always connected to that province or territory. Because of this, I believe Maple Leaf girls have a much higher educational value than American Girl dolls because their journals are jam-packed with information about provinces or territories. Discussing history and culture is a difficult topic because it's always been and always will be highly political and propaganda is something that all countries participate in to, within varying degrees. So when creating a line of dolls that focus on Canadian or America as a whole, it can be difficult to fully capture the picture of or as close to one as possible that will lead to sales and would be appropriate for younger audiences to hear and concepts that younger audiences would understand and find interesting. Maple Leaf Girl does this very well. Something that struck with me as Maple Leaf Girl being especially bold and culturally aware was when they released the Every Child Matters shirts for Maple Leaf dolls. This shows, in my opinion, that Maple Leaf didn't just use an indigenous character, Sila, for profit to appease people who call out companies when they don't practice diversity, but by creating these shirts, it shows how aware Maple Leaf is in educating the next generation could have easily pretended that racism doesn't exist in Canada and that everything in Canada is perfectly fine. But by creating these shirts, it is stating that Canada is not perfect and that we still have so much to unlearn in this country. Maple Leaf Girl could easily just rely on Canadian branding and benefit from the nostalgic feeling Canadians have for our country, as many companies do, focusing on the positives of the country and not any missteps or flaws that the country might have, which for example, American Girl does. American Girl is filled with incorrect historical facts and glorifications of unpleasant times and aspects of American history. Sometimes these inaccuracies are as simple as Mary Ellen buying a poodle skirt in a mall during the 1950s, or Felicity's mother having the skills to make Felicity's Christmas dress, when during this time um, these dresses were complex and made by male tailors, and this is an example of lack of research. But there's other examples like glorifying that Felicity's grandfather's plantations and glossing over the fact that Felicity's family owns slaves too, showing an attempt to show the very dark sides of American history as not that bad or something to be proud of. American Girl also states incorrect facts in their character encyclopedia, for example. For example, in the War of 1812, when it talks about Caroline's character, it states that neither side won that because both sides decided to have peace. This is incorrect because Canada, technically Britain at the time, won the war. 
that American Girl continues to continue the propaganda that American Girl never lost a war, even though it's factually incorrect. Based on past behaviors, I doubt Maple Lee would fall into the same footsteps since they look at the negative sides of Canada in the face instead of changing the facts to make consumers feel good. I think what causes some of the confusion surrounding that Maple Lee is a cardboard copy of American Girl might be the way that Maple Lee Girl brands itself. Maple Lee Girl has used the phrase Canadian Girl Doll several times on their website and even in the title of their official Facebook group. And at first glance, it might just look like a copy, but I think this was done for purely for search engine optimization. People might not remember the name Maple Lee, but if they search Canadian Girl Doll, this makes Maple Lee more likely to pop up, meaning it is easier to find. Even though us doll collectors will remember a name like Maple Lee, the average consumer or parents might not, and Canadian Girl is a lot easier to remember at first glance since American Girl has dominated the market for so long. This also leads to the discussion point of why there is a focus on the Canadian Girl branding when there is boy dolls and stating that it is Canadian Girl is less inclusive for male and non-binary collectors. But then again, in my opinion, American Girl has such a widely recognized brand that people will instantly recognize the purpose of the brand right away by calling the company company Canadian Girl, or at least using it in its motto and marketing. Another criticism I hear about Maple Lee Girls is how the dolls look. This is highly subjective, and I'm writing this video like a casual essay, but I have some points to prove that you're welcome to your opinion, regardless of how wrong it is. When I was seven, almost eight years old, looking at the dolls for the first time, it instantly loved how lifelike they looked, and that they looked like a girl just like me. Which isn't surprising since Maple Lee Doll's face molds were originally based off of a girl who lived in Aurora, Ontario. I often hear people who didn't grow up with these dolls, often Americans, call these dolls ugly. But are you seriously going to tell me that American Girl dolls look much better? The only reason you like the look of American Girl dolls is because they are nostalgic. When I first saw an American Girl for the first time in 2010, my first thought was, why the heck does she look like a beaver? Those two front teeth are jarring and looks utterly goofy. I mean, just look at it. I know Kaya dolls have their mouth closed because they're na in her nation, showing teeth is a sign of aggression, but this made me wonder, do Americans not think showing teeth is a sign of aggression? I'm an anthropologist, and I know old world monkeys show their teeth in aggression, and since we have a common ancestor with them, we instinctively have this reaction of uncomfiness. Same reason we are afraid of vampires and pointy teeth, it's in our nature to avoid these things. People wonder why American Girl boy dolls have the Kaya mold was probably because they asked a young boy and possibly girls what they preferred, and they probably said the closed mouth dolls because holy cow, it just looks weird. I mean, look at it. I mean, who would ask for this? If you change it now, people will say it doesn't look anything like American Girl and that it doesn't have that nostalgia factor. American Girl dolls also look very plain. Their eyes are often, but not always, pinwheel eyes, which look boring, unrealistic, and cartoon-like. Maple Lee dolls have realistic, detailed irises. Maple Lee dolls have realistic lines and creases, making American girls look flat and expressionless in comparison. If anything, American girl dolls look goofy, while Maple Lee girls look content with a subtle smile. American Girl arguably have the same criticism I had with Disney toddler dolls, Barbies, and Cabbage Patch Kids dolls. They look cartoon and unrealistic. With the Canadian branding, I know several people in Canada who would be turned off with the idea of supporting a company called American Girl and focusing on American stories and ideas. It goes back to the ideas that Canadians are tired of this idea that we are just like Americans and we do not have our own unique identity. Parents know this and often want to expose their children to Canadian toys and media since it can, get, it can be hard for our stories to be told over the loudness that is American media. Growing up, Maple Lee Girl was equal to the price of AG. But as the years go by, Maple Lee's prices have stayed the same in spite inflation, while American Girl continues to rise. Maple Lee has even stated publicly they are trying to keep its prices lower than its competitor, which is definitely true. For example, the average outfit for an American Girl doll in Canadian prices is around $50 to $60, with the average doll being $140. Well, Maple Lee Girls, the average price ranges from $20 to $40, and the dolls cost $115. What does the future of Maple Lee Girl look like? 
As I mentioned in a previous video, and was excellently explained by Darling Dolls, a quarter of all toy sales last year were made by adults who bought toys to keep for themselves. How does this affect Maple Leaf Girl, if at all? It does, in fact, affect Maple Leaf. I joined the official Maple Leaf Facebook group, and it is full of Maple Leaf fans who are adults. The reason this demographic isn't as large as other doll brands like Barbie and American Girl is one key factor. Time. Maple Leaf Girl was created in 2003, and of course, I think it takes a few years for a business to get going and the word to spread. Personally, I think owning a 2007 edition of Maple Leaf Girl is as early as you're going to get, and I'm really proud of how I found the company so early. Most people who grew up with these dolls at the earliest are my age or younger, so we don't have the financial purchasing power of older generations that grew up with American Girl since American Girl was founded in 1986, so people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and possibly 50s purchasing these dolls for nostalgic purposes, while people in their 20s would be purchasing Maple Lee dolls for nostalgic purposes. I have no doubt the trend of adults purchasing toys continues and that the Maple Leaf adult collector fan base will grow. Several people have told me they learned about Maple Leaf from my videos and I'm really proud of that fact. Clara, my custom Maple Leaf girl which I saved from a thrift store is a fan favorite in my collection and I have done several lives and people have asked me to see her on my Instagram and she is a doll that most often gets around the most likes. So it's undeniable that these dolls have a following for a reason. I think the future is bright for Maple Lee and it is far from ending anytime soon. Make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know who your favorite Maple Lee girl is and hit the subscribe button for more doll collecting videos like this. I, I focus on doll collecting news and video essays like this one. Also make sure to follow my Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.